All right, guys, welcome back. This is development lecture number three. Um, this one is actually in your book, so I'm not going to spend a great deal of time on it. However, this is a developmental theory. Um, we just had the modernization approach, which was nice in theory, but um, certainly had its flaws. Rostow's theory um, is still considered by quite a few people. So we're going to talk about this and the idea of using international trade to sort of jumpstart um, a country's economy. Um, first of all, okay, obviously we're going to start over here on the little side or the very little bottom part um, of this arrow, okay, and that's where you're going to be in L LDC. And then sort of uh, as we progress, okay, hopefully we'll end up at the larger part of this vector um, being an MDC. Um, in order to begin, uh, Rostow simply just states that we are going to start with a traditional society. Um, traditional society is going to be that of an, basically an LDC as you would imagine it in your head. Um, it's going to have limited technology. It's going to be a very static society, which means that it is not going to change um, over time. Uh, really, it's the idea of folk culture. Um, you know, it may differ from place to place at a given time, but certainly not time to time at a given place. Um, so that's what you would be starting with. Really no infrastructure, um, infrastructure being that anything uh, that would be necessary in order to start development in the area. Um, you need to have some preconditions for takeoff in order for Rostow's model to work. And preconditions for takeoff basically means that there has to be something in your country, in your less developed region, that could be commercially exploited in terms of agriculture or mining or fishing. Um, a great example of this um, could be the acai berries. Um, if anybody's noticed, especially ladies, um, lately there's been this like huge craze about using, you know, acai berries or pomegranate or whatever it may be, okay, for um, cosmetics and lotion and, you know, age-defying wrinkle cream and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. Um, however, as you can probably guess, acai berries are not something that are grown um, in a great deal of areas. So we could take a less developed country, say in Sub-Saharan Africa or Southeast Asia, and for example, they grow acai berries. Well, at this point, they could have a precondition for takeoff if they are maybe the first ones out there to offer, okay, and, and make um, known that they have these acai berries. Um, with that, you're going to have um, probably some sort of commercial exploitation, which means okay, that you're going to have the development of a manufacturing sector. Uh, what that means is, for example, L'Oreal. Uh, L'Oreal may end up visiting your little island in Southeast Asia. <clears throat> they see that you have acai berries, and they decide um, that they are actually going to begin to harvest acai berries from your island, um, and they'll create a, uh, create a large you know, market farm. Um, it could be a factory farm where uh, you're going to be out there either working in the fields or you could be actually, you know, um, you know, somehow manufacturing the acai berries into a cream or whatever it may be. Um, but you're going to have that manufacturing sector develop. Um, your drive to maturity is going to be the development of wider industrial and commercial bases. So, for example, as people um, are going to uh, sell these acai berries to L'Oreal. L'Oreal is going to pay them, and in return, that wealth will be spread um, in a manner to which you would actually try to develop your area. Um, the drive to maturity would be the idea of creating an industrial and commercial base. Uh, this would be ancillary um, types of activities, ancillary meaning sort of in addition to um, or on the side. For example, um, if people are making a great deal of money uh, picking these acai berries, perhaps they need um, a clothing manufacturer uh, in order for them to be able to, um, you know, clothe themselves for the job. Um, perhaps they need a doctor. Um, perhaps they need a um, grocery store. Um, L'Oreal may even bring in executives, and the executives that are going to be living in that area are going to want things that are very sort of MDC-based. Um, perhaps they will bring in, um, you know, internet, um, those types of activities. After you have that drive to maturity, you are then going to hopefully, in theory anyways, create a society of high mass consumption, which means as you bring in money okay, from L'Oreal, Okay, L'Oreal is pumping this money in, they're getting their acai berries, lots of rich old women are 
buying them. Um, you know, people think they smell great and they make the wrinkles go away. Okay, your little island is going to um, really accrue some wealth. As they accrue wealth, though, instead of going to individuals, if they could filter that back into the area, um, you would have the development of grocery stores. You would have the development of gas stations. You would have the development of car um, manufacturing, perhaps um, car dealerships. Uh, you would have fast food develop. You would have then people wanting leisure time. Um, so potentially, uh, you know, baseball stadiums, football stadiums, um, you know, soccer stadiums, perhaps even, you know, movie theaters, restaurants, um, you know, tourism, any of those ideas. Um, basically, by the end of this, you are taking a traditional society and going all the way into a high mass consumption society. Um, from this, okay, you are going to have the sort of what needs to happen in order to actually have a precondition for takeoff. Um, if you think back, okay, I mentioned that we're starting out as an LDC. We probably are, um, you know, kind of impoverished. However, that precondition for takeoff that you have are actually being able to grow acai berries um, in its best condition. Um, however, in order for you to actually find out about this, um, you actually have to have some sort of external influence. For example, uh, the people on your island may think that the acai berries taste like crap. Uh, and therefore, nobody has ever picked them out of the trees or the bushes. Um, nobody has ever thought about making a lotion out of them. And so instead, they're just kind of a nuisance little fruit that occasionally will fall on the ground. People step on them and make the bottom of their shoes red. I mean, that's about it. Um, unless somebody came in and pointed out the value, uh, likely your island would never understand that. Um, so therefore, because of the interest in finding natural remedies uh, for cosmetics. That's kind of the, the new, um, I guess, trend, so to speak. Um, they may actually, L'Oreal, be out looking for um, a fruit or a berry or some sort of natural ingredient and happen to find the acai berries. Um, because of that, they will then indicate that it is of some wealth. You are no longer sort of nuisanced by these, but now you're fortunate to have some sort of precondition for takeoff. Um, <clears throat> once L'Oreal comes in, they're going to actually have to install infrastructure first. Good example, infrastructure would be um, creating a port, a port or maybe even an airport. Um, that way the L'Oreal executives can get there so that ships can get there and be able to transport the goods. Um, also an emergence of a political and social elite. Uh, a social elite may be the managers of the factory or the managers of the farm. Um, as you bring more people in and you start to really develop, you're going to need some sort of political system as well. Um, infrastructure will include things like electricity. Um, you will likely need to figure out a way for phones and internet access and um, natural gas or some form of energy for heat um, or cooling. Uh, additionally, plumbing, sanitation, all of those types of ideas, bridges where they're needed, roads where they're needed, um, all of that is going to be installed as L'Oreal comes in simply out of necessity. They cannot actually produce these acai berries um, and transport them um, at a fast enough rate if there are no uh, infrastructures in place. Um, <clears throat> after L'Oreal comes in, okay, and you've started this, you know, massive sort of factory farming of your berries, um, after your investment in the manufacturing is more than 10% of your national income, um, as 10% or more of your income comes from those acai berries, you're going to have the development of other institutions. A uh, good example of that as you uh, work on the farm, perhaps you uh, brought your children with you. Um, to the island, um, maybe working executives brought their children there. Um, now that you have money, perhaps you as a native want your children to be able to speak English or read English, and so um, education will develop. Uh, additionally, like I mentioned before, a political system will develop. You will have people that will run for offices um, or show some sort of political power. Also, you need some sort of law and order, um, potentially. Uh, <clears throat> an army or a police force, certainly, a, you know, fire department, um, emergency crews, um, anything of that sort. Uh, and then economic institutions. You need to have banks. Um, if you do not have a bank, it is likely that people who are trying to develop these new types of ancillary services 
will not have the funding on their own to do so. And so therefore starting banks, places where people can ask for loans, um, you know, invest their money, um, all of those also need to be in place. Now, as you drive to maturity and you have that development of all of these other um, types of activities, you know, potentially shopping malls, um, you know, places where you have high mass consumption, you know, furniture stores, again, fast food restaurants, any of those types of things, um, you then actually become an exploitive country in terms of international trade. For example, if you're the only country in the world that has these acai berries, you could actually exploit more developed countries. For example, you could tell L'Oreal that you are no longer going to sell to them because a competitor has come in um, and offered you more money. Um, because of that, okay, L'Oreal then might increase the amount of money that they're pumping into your <clears throat> island. Um, so as you end up having an advantage in international trade, you are going to be able to really sort of volley for more money coming into your country, which means more money to be spent on high mass consumption or mass produced consumer um, products, which really inevitably brings us to pop culture and a country that is well developed. Um, so if you take a look at this whole idea, um, you really are going from a tr traditional society to that high mass consumption society, um, and it usually does not take very long. Um, however, there are some certainly some weaknesses, and your book will go into this. First of all, it's too simplistic for human geography. Um, when we actually talk about it economically, um, you know, economic classes will really kind of go into it in more detail, but for us, it really perpetuates this idea that every country in the world will eventually be able to make progress from being an LDC to an MDC um, if they are able to compete to the best of their ability in the world economy. It's one of those ideas. If you try really, really, really hard, okay, you'll become developed. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, it's not reasonable to, to compare an early starter to a late starter. For example, your island um, was, you know, sort of targeted by L'Oreal and you found out that acai berries um, live there. However, a neighboring island then notices that acai berries are able to grow in their area. However, L'Oreal does not need that many acai berries. At that point, the neighboring island may seek out a competitor. However, the competitor's prices um, for manufacturing those acai berries are probably a little bit lower. And additionally, at some point, it may just be that there's too much acai berry in the world um, and those people are going to end up because they are um, not contracted out um, and really because the competition has pushed them out of the way, uh, you will have people that are no longer working towards creating acai berries. Perhaps they'll quit planting them or go back to really kind of ignoring them. Um, other things to think about, the early starters were free from any sort of obstacle or precedence. Um, for example, okay, the idea that, well, you're going to sell to L'Oreal, um, L'Oreal comes in, they really do not, uh, your country does not have anything that is prohibiting you from working with uh, that country or that company. Um, however, okay, it could be that once that is started, uh, L'Oreal says, no, we only buy from this island. Um, and so for other islands, they may end up being sort of out of luck. Um, a lot of times that's going to be political, um, you know, sort of, uh, I like to say someone's getting greased, um, probably some sort of kickback from L'Oreal to the government um, in order to just trade with L'Oreal or perhaps the other way around. Also important to understand that late starters must compete in competition and face some barriers. Um, so a good example of that is Russia coming out of the Soviet Union. They're actually trying to create a capitalist society, but in the face of competition um, and, and really sort of this barrier of communism, um, a good example of this would be elderly people in Russia. Um, because the elderly people in Russia were working in factories, their pensions have been cut because they are no longer communists. Um, and so these elderly people are trying to go out and start jobs, um, you know, get jobs. However, they cannot compete with other um, groups of people. Uh, Russia is going to be struggling in terms of trying to create new car manufacturing, um, new computer manufacturing. Uh, really, they need to find something that will be able to thrust them forward uh, towards a more developed country, but at this point, um, it's really sort of monopolized by other MDCs, particularly in Western Europe, and if they are rich in Russia, um, they are going to be 
a an elite group usually of aristocracy. Um, before we go on to Gunnar Franks, one of the largest weaknesses of Rothschild's model, and, that, and your book will mention this, but if you think about that perpetuation of sort of this developmentalism myth, the idea that everybody will develop, um, the article that you are reading, The Geography of Poverty, um, is and Poverty and Wealth, is actually um, really, it should ring true right here for you, because as the um, the article states there are some countries geographically that are sort of out of luck when it comes to uh, developing. Uh, consider for a moment a landlocked country or perhaps a country in a humid environment. Um, also consider that some countries in order to be able to develop in this manner they need to have some sort of external sort of influence plus the preconditions for takeoff. If you have nothing but sand um, on your island and there's not a single thing of value, there will be no development theory. Uh, there will be no external stimulus. There's certainly not going to be any precondition for takeoff and therefore you unfortunately will not become a developed country. <laughs> 